Good morning and uh, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with Mary Robinson representing the board. Just to say that from the, our side, that we are actually here to hear what you have to say, to share with you our experiences, and in particular, to take a stand with you uh, and to take the appropriate actions that you want to take to build good governance and leadership on the ground, particularly in relation to the protection of our environment, our cultural, our economic, natural, and environmental heritage. I'm really, really honored. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so I'm Yasmin. I'm working. Uh, I've been obsessed with the Nile uh, River for the past few years, I'm working on the governance and water security. And I think uh, really reflecting on Jake's um, comment and question that um, he just posed, I think I've, I've been also puzzled by the same question. So there's a dilemma when we're working on the Nile, similar to other resources with, who, which are transnational and transboundary and crossing cutting borders of so many nations and being shared with so many countries that you have two sides of the story. So a story that are, um, there are kind of accumulated grievances, social cultural relations, identities that kind of were formed and mediated the relation between resource and the society, created this relation of this is my resource, not your resources, this is not yours, this is mine, and so on. And, and then you have the natural resource in itself that is very flowing by its nature and that does not know about these limitations and the boundaries. It is really, really critical that when we're thinking of governance of our natural resources, especially those that um, are, are a bit abstract to conceptualize, like flowing water, like oceans, it's really, really important to ensure that not only do we have the oversight of government and big bodies, but also that we include young people, young women, and vulnerable communities as well. It's been a very rich discussion. I think one of the problems in the way that we address natural resources, environment, climate, um, this year, 2020, is we are in silos. So we deal in a silo, mainly with emissions going forward to COP26, and also adaptation, mitigation, yes, loss and damage, but it, that's the silo. Um, I think at the core of a lot of the problems or that have been described here is um, governance. I think what's happening now is that we have a lot of the older generation who are still running the show. Um, we have a lot, uh, and, and, and what's happened in recent years, at least in my own country of South Africa, is that you've seen there being a proliferation of certain groups of people who are more focused on eating the pie instead of growing the pie. Um, and they've made it very unattractive for people of our generation, the talented people, to, 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 to get into public service, to get into um, organizations that, uh, that would uh, develop or advance um, the continent. Um, and, in the, and what's happened is that you've, you found that the people in power, the, the decision makers now, are people who are there for nefarious reasons. Um, what comments would you have for us um, as young people to sort of encourage us to, 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 to continue to fight towards um, getting into, into, play, into positions of governance? Um, just because at the moment, I think a lot of people are discouraged and are thinking to themselves, where can I go and create a better life for me and mine instead of um, for me and my country? And that's why I like so much the Mo Ibrahim Foundation, the Mo Ibrahim Index, which is showing service delivery to people and how go governments are doing on it and trying to get governments um, to look at where they, where they figure on the index, etc., in order to try and generate more of a sense that the whole point of leadership of your country is to serve your people. And I think as, as now generation, you should insist on that. You know, the sovereignty of countries does not belong to the head of state. It belongs to the people. And, you know, that, that, that seems to me to be a fundamental strength of the now generation, that somehow you're very connected, you're very savvy, and you can insist on this. You know, very briefly, Sefo, you know, uh, at the end of the day, good governance is not won by clever leaders and clever people. It's won by people standing up and saying, we had enough. 
when we talk about public participation, what type of participation is it? What voices are we bringing into the room? Are we ensuring that marginalized communities, women, young people, uh, persons with disabilities are part of the conversation? And we must also take cognizance of the fact that oftentimes when these things are happening, they're happening in communities that often don't have the power to engage. Uh, and I'll give an example about the Lamu coal plant in Lamu. Um, and oftentimes, um, people in those communities are disempowered. So there needs to be engagement and empowering of our generation, giving young people a voice and an opportunity to speak about the challenges they're facing in their community, but also making it relevant to their everyday lives. Um, so that, that for me, um, having been in that space, um, I call myself a recovering uh, policymaker. Having been in that space, I know the challenges that a lot of um, citizens face because they don't understand the context in which we are operating. So you could be speaking about technology and building roads, but until it, I, I realize that you're cutting trees to create those um, or build those roads, it, it stops becoming relevant to me. So I'm, I'm just going to say um, I really love the engagements, but I hope that moving forward, because a lot of us are going to get into the spaces where we are engaging and implementing policies, that we are very intentional about ensuring we are amplifying and centering the voices of those that matter in what we do.